Okay, so the question is, what's my preferred shooting mode? Manual. I prefer to shoot in manual shooting mode. Um, and, and, and again, we have to go back to the basics, the fundamentals, which is why do you choose a particular shooting mode as your, uh, your why do you make that choice? And in a uh, learning uh, photography uh, episode, I talk about the, the, the exposure triangle and what each of those, you know, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and why you choose one of those to be your priority. So I won't go into that. But so let's say we've got aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual. Those are the creative modes of shooting. Um, and you know your cam most cameras have uh, those are the called the, the creative modes. The basic shooting modes or the scene modes are the ones with the little icons. You have the sporting guy or the little flower for macro or the the little head, the, the head of a person for a portrait. We're not talking about those. We're talking about the creative modes. And my choice is typically 99% of the time, you know, maybe 95% of the time, is manual. And the reason I choose manual is because I want to control the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. The ISO is not one of those things that you control on that dial. It's a separate, a separate dial. And you always want your ISO to be as low as possible, and you only raise your ISO if you have to. I refer to it as a wild card. So it's a, as a last resort, you increase your ISO, because you can't go any, any uh, slower with your shutter speed, or you can't, your lens won't allow you to open it up, the aperture up anymore, so you have to increase your ISO. So my preferred mode is manual. So what do I do? Uh, in any situation, you're you're making a decision when you go out in in uh, with your camera. Uh, you look at the conditions, and so let's say the conditions are in this example a sunny day. It's bright, so I know I can keep a low ISO. Uh, my my EM1, my Olympus EM1 will go down to 100. Your camera may go to 50. Maybe it only goes to 200. Whatever you go the lowest one. I typically use 200. Um, so I've set my ISO to 200. I, then it's a, a decision, of what, is, what is my creative goal here? So let's say it's flowers in our garden, in the backyard, and I want to get a really, really good picture of a, of a, of a blossom of a flower that's blooming in the spring. Um, and I want to blur the background a little bit. And so I know I want a shallow depth of field. And that's typically what photographers want. They want to control aperture and so they want to shallow, because they want to shallow depth of field. That means in the scene, only a very, very, very shallow area from front to back behind your subject that you're focusing on will be in focus. So in my case, let's say I have my 25 millimeter, which is equivalent of 50 millimeter on a full frame camera. Uh, I have my 25 millimeter on, it goes down to one, it'll open up to an aperture of f1.8. So I open it up to f1.8 because with that large aperture, it means the aperture is really wide open, a lot of light's coming in. I'm going to get a very shallow depth of field, the I can get the blossom in, in crisp focus, and the background's going to be blurred. Okay, so I've got an ISO of 200, I have a uh, aperture of f1.8, and I guess at my shutter speed at, let's say, 1 over 500, because it's a bright day. I bring the camera up to my eye, I, I, I focus on the, on the blossom, I look at the meter on my, on my camera in the viewfinder, it's at the bottom, it may be on the side of your viewfinder, and top may be minus and top may be uh, p positive on your camera. Nikon's typically, I think the positive is on the bottom, on Canon the positive is on the top, on, a, on an Olympus uh, and a lot of other cameras it's along the bottom and it is positive to the right. In, is I'm looking through the viewfinder and negative to the left. And at one five hundredth of a second, the meter of the camera is telling me, whoa, Bill, you are underexposed by two stops. So it's, it's the little index of the meter is down to the minus two. So I say, ooh. Well, I know I like, creatively, I like to have foliage underexposed by one stop. So at one five hundredth, one stop would be one over 250. If I wanted to get that little pointer to the zero, it'd be 1 over 125, 125th, 1, 125th of a second. 
But I don't want that. I just want one stop underexposed. So I go to 1 over 250. Poof! I take the picture. I look at it. Perfect. That's what I wanted. It's perfect. Let's change gears. Now the, the object is a person, maybe somebody with me, maybe it's just a stranger on the street. Uh, I'm in a city, there are buses and there are cars going by, and I want to give the impression of motion. I want to I make this two-dimensional image look as though it has motion in it. And so I focus on the person that's on the, on the sidewalk at the curb, and I set my shutter speed, again, I'm in manual, set my shutter speed to 1 over 15th of a second. That's going to cause some blur of the cars going by, but I should be able to to kind of see that there are cars or buses, there's colors going by. And I focus on the person, my subject, that's on the curb, and hope that he or she doesn't move. If I know him, I say, don't move. Uh, and so I'm focused on them. I've got, it's again, it's a bright day, so I've got my ISO at 200. I've got my shutter speed at 1 over 15. I look at the camera to see, and I you know, arbitrarily put the aperture and say F8. I'm not terribly concerned about depth of field. But I just put it in F8. And it said, whoa, Bill, you are way underexposed. Maybe three stops. Or maybe it's off the scale. So I go from F8 to F5.6. Mm, the little needle starting to come into the range here now. We're minus three. I go to F4 because I've got a lens that let me do that. And so it's still two under. So I, in this case, I, I, I go all the way to so F4, then F2.8, F2. I go to F2. So my lens will let me do that. And it's right on zero. The index pointer is right on zero. Take the shot. And, have it, and maybe I put it on a, on a tripod since I'm going that slow at shutter speed. Perfect. I've got a blurred image, but the subject is crisp and clear. And so I chose that. And that's why I choose manual, because I can do those things. There you are.